Well, 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 hello everyone. Sunday night's here. Sunday night live. Uh, nice to see there's a few guys in the chat already before I, before I got here. Um, queuing up, waiting. Nice. Uh, I'll give you a little roll call in a minute, guys. Uh, great to be back on a Sunday. I know I had to cancel one of the last ones due to the weather. Weather's a wee bit better tonight, so I'm back in the, the studio come shed. Um going to talk tonight about budgets, whiskey budgets. Um, but just before I do that, I'm just going to give a couple of mentions to you guys that have popped in nice and early. So it's nice to see Mr. Slinger was in first again, first on the doors. Um, banging him down, waiting outside like an alcoholic. Um, hope you're drinking something nice, Mark. Uh, hope everyone's drinking something nice. I'm actually having a nice wee sip of uh, Glendronach Allardyce, kindly donated to me by Mr. Tim, uh, or Tim, Tim, Tim. You know who I am, Tim. But cheers, guys. Let's pop back and see who was in early. So we had early doors. We had uh, Mark Slinger. Is in Neil Bloor was in early. Nice to see you, Neil. I have responded to your email, mate. Uh, the Flying Hussar 303, Bart's in. Nice to see you, Bart. Ben the Demon Hunter was in early. I'm not sure if he's still around because he says he might have to pop in and out. But yeah, the Demon Hunter's in. Uh, Andy C was in nice and early. Uh, that's nice to see you, Andy. You finally made one. Luna Aaron's popped in. I have replied to you as well, Luna. Got your email as well, so I've popped into that. I've got Molasses over there in St. Louis. How you doing, Molasses? Thanks for popping in. What are you drinking, mate, and what time is it over there? Uh, let's have a look. Uh, Andy Ard Baggy. I know there's a lot going on tonight, guys. I think Roy's got a Patreon-only stream tonight, so there's a few bits going on. I think Whiskey Jason was on. When I first started this, oh, mamma mia. How you doing, Roy? I think Roy's hit me with a super chat straight off, man. Thanks very much, Roy. Apologies about the clash, mate, but I think I'd made Sunday night a kind of regular thing now, so so I had no choice, mate. I'd posted it up, and I'll catch up with yours later on, mate. Um, but thanks again for the super chat, Roy. That's to you. Good health there, buddy. We bit of Glendronach Allardyce. Cheers. Yeah, I think there's a few things going on tonight. When I decided to do Sundays, there wasn't really a lot happening. Sunday looked a good night, but I think it's uh, it's one of those, whether it's a winter thing or not. But hey-ho, Jimmy Jazzy's in. Yeah, as I say, Ann Bard Baggy's in. Nice to see you, Andy. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, I think got Molasses, uh, Neil Blur. Yeah, I think I've got my odd. This is the one. David Francavilla. Sorry, David. Gabriel Welding's in. How you doing, Gabriel? He's a local lad here in Manchester. So is Bart. Uh, nice to see you guys in. I think that's pretty much. I don't think I've missed anybody else at the minute. Welsh Toro. Nice to see you again, Welsh. 24. Oh, no. Nice to see you, buddy. Becoming a regular thing, this. Oh, I've got the whiskey novice as well. How are you doing, Jim? Jim, look. You see what's here. Look at that. It's all ready for you. It's gone out tomorrow, mate. So that's that one. Kevin Bryant's in. Nice to see you, Kevin. And I think I'm pretty much... Oh, multi missiles. a few popping in now. Paul Gibbs is in. Philip Eagleton. Nice to see you, Philip. Everyone enjoying a Cotswold Founders Choice 64. Let's have a look. It wouldn't be, where are we? Uh, got one of them going here as well, mate. Cotswold. 60.5 this one is. So that one of yours looks a bit, a bit nice. Oh, Emily Chambers. How you doing, Emily? Nice to see you popping in. I think you'll be keeping Luna company. In the ladies' end. Nice to see you. 
Ah, uh, else did I had? I've got David Owen. Oh, there's a few coming in now. David Owen's in, DJ Beacon. Uh, brilliant. Thanks for all these guys coming in. I'm really, really humbled, folks. So I'll probably catch up with you some years as I go through, but I may as well crack on me tonight. So, uh, what was that? Aqua VT Cheers. For, oh, yeah, there's a few going on there. Uh, what do you talk about budgets, guys? It's something that I've, I've just recently put together a video for beginners. So it dawned on me what, what would you spend initially on whiskey? Um, so as a beginner, for me, I did, as I say, everyone knows I got into it collecting it before I started drinking it. So it'll be interesting to know how you guys. So there's a wee bit of participation involved for you guys. I know a lot of these are kind of seasoned connoisseurs. I think there is a couple of newbies around, new to whiskey and stuff like that in the, in the chat. So it may be interesting for you to get talking to each other. But how do you go about buying your first bottle? Um, how do you decide what you're going to spend? You're going to spend twenty pounds. You're going to spend thirty pounds. I think I put in the topic. I think it was under fifty pounds because I think a lot. When I watch a lot of the guys who are doing some reviews who have budgets, it seems to be that kind of fifty pound is their their barrier. But I think as yeah. So what do you, what do you? How do you pick up your first whiskey? How do you decide you're going to get into whiskey? Do you do it through? going into bars and just trying a sample or have you got friends who are into it? So it's it'd be really, really interesting. Luna's got a budget of around 150 euros, except if it's something really special. So that's a nice budget, Luna. Is that is that per bottle? Is that per week? Or is that per month? I think everyone has different uh, cast strength Highland Part 12. Oh, nice. Uh, now, regularizing was my entry price was right. Yeah, I think when you look at some of those, I think the initial ones that people tend to hit on right away is the kind of old Pulteney 12s and the Abelour 10s and Highland Park 25s because they're usually all on offer. The limit is good question. It's more than a person's budget. It's kind of moral thing too. <laughs> yeah, I think once you get into whiskey Welsh, I think it then becomes, it gets tougher and tougher not to, to spend more and more money. Um looking at some of these are saying here dg beacon i'm cheap so couldn't go over 30 dollars to begin with and now try to stay under 80. okay so what happens if you if there's a really nice bottle kicking around and everybody's raving about it and it's it's maybe a hundred dollars would you would you stretch to a hundred uh first bottle was drum beauty prince charles edward stewart isles of sky wow but the official buffalo trace bourbon yeah, wow. A few of you getting involved here. I'm just trying to keep up with you. <laughs> the chat's not normally this busy, guys, so there must be a, there must be a few in. Yeah, I've got about 40 odd in, so, so that, that's a good start anyway. Uh, oh, where's Chris? Chris, he's, I know what Chris is. £50 unless super, super, super special, and that would be my opinion, super special. Okay, you having a pop there, uh, Chris, at my super supers? Um yeah, no, it's interesting to see how it, how it starts. Where does it, you know, once you, you get into, because I think initially when I first, when I first looked at, my, I, I used to get a lot of gifts in the beginning, so they would all be those kind of supermarket bottles, um, 25 quid, 20 quid. So you're at below us. They're usually always on offer, 20 quid. So I think when I'd get, I'd get gifted quite a few of those in the beginning, um, but gradually, as you, you kind of get into it, you, you're, you're not too worried about non chill filtering, you're not too worried about the 40%. I think as as your kind of palate grows and everything gets more interesting, then people start talking about that 40% is not good enough, it needs to be 46, it needs to be non chill filtered, it needs to be coloured. And I think once you start getting into those kind of presentations, I think if your £50 budget might start to get stretched a little bit. So it's interesting to see how that how that works. Uh, whiskey Novice, that seems the case with me too. Uh, I'm just going to try and keep up with these. Let's have a look. Uh, yeah. That seemed brilliant. A real with £50 and €150. Euros. If it's special, I'd be willing to go around 200 not for that, you're mostly paying for the rarity instead of quality. Yeah, no, it's it's just interesting to see where people would stop. You know, I think I, I was a wee bit different because somewhere down the line, I ended up getting caught up and buying collectible bottles and all that. So 
Uh, here we go. This is one. This is quite interesting. Let's have a look. How much now is the Glendron up 15? Funny enough, you mentioned that because that, that's the bottle that changed my life. <laughs> uh, this, this is one of the ones I used to buy lots of these at auction because it was the only way you could get it. And I think at the time you, you could be anything up to 250 quid for this, which is, which is insane because I think when it came out, it was about 50 quid a bottle when it came out. Um, but because it became so collectible and so rare and everybody was raving about it, and to be fair, I was one of the ones, I was just buying them for fun. I was just paying anything to get it. Uh, and sometimes when you're going to the auctions, that's, that's where you need to be careful. But the great thing with that now, because they've done the new revival, it's actually had an impact on the old one because the old one now you could probably pick it up for about 90, 100 pounds at auction, maybe just a touch over 100. So that's that's really come down, which is the beauty of them doing the newer bottle. Um, in my opinion, it's probably not quite as good as the, um, as the older one. Um, but again, it's one of those I get kind of caught up in it. The other one, which I don't know if Roy's still in or Roy's started his show yet, but this was the other one that became one of those. And it's again, it depends from auction to auction. You could you could buy, I think there was some of them going at some point. I was paying about 200 quid for one of them. And then sometimes you can now pick them up for as little as kind of 70 or 80 pounds. So, so there's a lot of things going on, but. I think as your journey progresses, well, the point I'm trying to make, I think as your journey progresses, I think your budget has to increase. I usually spend 40, 60 on the bottles I drink, but we'll go higher. I know it's good. I got old Ponty, 17-year-old, for 65 plus cost tonight. That That's a bargain. You know, even, even uh, it depends on what your, what your taxes are and your shipping is, but that that's a real bargain, that it's 65. Uh, is that through auction? Uh, take it looks like it's through auction, Neil. Um, but yeah, you could get lucky with some of those little finds at auction, which is fantastic. Uh, and I'm still on the market for some of those. Obviously, I'm drinking now, so I'm spending more to drink and I'm spending more to share with you guys. Uh, oh, yeah, I like that one. That's the Russian IPSC Glendronach 15. Also, ch it changed my life, man, because I'm now drinking more whiskey than I used to. But, um, but yeah, no, it's a fantastic whiskey. Uh, let's have a look it's through some of these. Let's see what some of you guys are saying. Let's give us a chance to catch up with these. Uh, great. Yeah, it was a great price, that. Uh, let's see what Retief's saying. So, Gerhard, let's have a look. Most I spend was six ninety five for a 25 minute. Wow, we not doing that again. <laughs> uh, I said that's a McAllen bite, that, isn't it? It's the problem with McAllen. Uh, what's let's see what Tony's saying. I bought my first 15 year old revival from the distillery, yeah. 40, yeah, that's, that's where it started. It's silly money, but eventually it became became a sought after bottle, and that, that's the that's what happens. And I think one of the other one, the reason I put the Glendron up 15 on my thumbnail is because that's where the journey really started for me. Um, and then obviously, the, I think the latest one that's that seems to have that sort of bug at the minute is the other. The, Kill Karen Eight. Where's that one? That must be around me somewhere. That's, I've got one of them kicking about. But the Kill Karen Eight seems to have that sort of craze at the minute, where everybody's screaming to get one. So again, it's a fifty-pound bottle of whiskey, but I think people all over the place are paying more to get it uh, because it's it's just one of them. It's it's not around. Uh, Different get a hold in Canada. Here it's available in some supermarkets. Yeah. Uh, what's DJ saying? Uh, the real key is to enjoy what you got rather than what you might be able to get. Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, it's, but I think as your journey progresses, I think you probably you just want to taste better stuff, whether there's better stuff around or whether there's not better stuff around. But it's how do you know? Do you um? How, how do you buy? As I say earlier, how do you buy your first? But how do you know what you're going to go out and buy? What you're going to spend your fifty pound on? Do you? Do you buy, try it first? Do you buy it in a bar? Do you try samples? Do you get dramples sent to you from friends who have nice whiskey collections? There's lots. Uh, okay, got a couple of new guys popped in. Got Antonio C. How you doing, Antonio? I'm looking for a 1974 vintage, my first year of birth. Okay, and the budget is a little bit higher. 
Yeah, I think you're going to spend a bit of money on anything with that vintage, Antonio. Good luck with that. I hope you find one. And hope you enjoy it if you open it. I rate whiskey on a 10-point scale. The Allardyce is 9.5, so I'll buy a few bottles. Same for Elijah Craig Barley Proof. Okay, so he's tend to stick to similar bottles, um, which is great. Okay, got a few now. I've got Jimbo Smith. Thanks for popping in, Jimbo. Bigger Anderson, nice to see you again, buddy. Been a wee while since I heard from you. Nice to see you again. And thanks for popping in. Let's pop through some of these comments. Missing half of this. I joined a whiskey group to get intel on good malt. Yeah, how's that group going for you, Bart? <laughs> I think you've had a few. Uh, I think you've had a few nice whiskies since you joined it. But that, again, that's that's another thing. As I say, yeah, Bart's local in Manchester, so we've we've got a little group going, and I think every time we're kind of catching up, we're um, we're sharing some whiskies. I think there's been a few nice ones shared. Uh, I've got a few here. I say. I've got a nice Linkwood 12 that Gabriel sent me there. Maybe try some of these tonight. Got a Compass Box Flaming Heart, Gabriel's, yeah. Uh, Optimore 7.3, so there's some, some nice stuff. So I'm finding now, I was on my own really when I was when I was buying my stuff for collecting and then when I started drinking it. Uh, oh, wow, we whiskey friend. I got a 1974 Kalila for 22 euros. <laughs> well, many. <laughs> yeah, you got me excited there. Um, let's have a look. And uh, let's see what else we've got up here. Have I got? Uh, I'm going for minis. Yeah, no, minis are a good way. I see I do a lot of minis. And uh, as I say, you can probably, I don't know if you can see here, but I've got boxes and boxes and boxes of them. Um, and that's, that's where I tend to find I'm going to try something out. And I'll, I'll buy a mini. There's lots of samples around at the at Master of Malks and stuff like that. Oh, Malt Monks popped in. I wonder what you've popped in for. I just seem to lock onto a bottle. I always try to do my research and if they feel the worth is the purchase, they get a, a, a take it as a sample. Yeah, it's as simple as that. Okay. Have you ever been disappointed then when your research has probably let you down a little bit and you've maybe paid a wee bit over the odds? How do you feel with that? Uh, let's see what Jim's saying. Uh, whiskey, getting access to good stuff makes a difference, I'd imagine. See a lot of Scotch whiskey drinker collects us pinching up with whiskey in local shops in Scotland. Yeah, no, it's just one of them things. It's, it depends on if you're just buying it to have a, a little bar or you're buying to have a, a big bar. So it's my whiskey budget is about 120. Well, we know that, Eric. You know you do everything big, man. You've had to buy it. You have to go and get a new house because your whiskey collection's got that big. Let's have a look at where Eric's there. Nice to see you, Eric. Thanks for popping in, buddy. Nice to see you again. Uh, whiskey Scout. Oh, how are you doing, Robert? Thanks for popping in, mate. My budget wife says no more for a while. I'm done buying for a bit. Well, yeah, this is one of the dues. Ever hide it from the wives? Do you tell the wives it's a £30 bottle of whiskey or a £20 bottle of whiskey? Or do you tell them the truth? That's this is why I think I put on the uh, on the little thumbnail. Let's tell the truth. Uh, do your other uh, halves agree with what you're spending? Um, let's see where we are. Get some nice whiskey for that, Eric. Get a few McAllens for that. And let's Antonio. What's Antonio saying? Good plan. Got to keep the budget in mind. Yeah, I think when it comes to whiskey, it becomes your, your hobby, doesn't it? It becomes a, a kind of way of life. Um, seems to take over. It's taken over mine at the minute. I don't seem to have a, a minute to myself at the minute. Let's see. I've got a new name there. I, th I think that's a new name. Cute Hoor. I'm a whiskey drinker on limited budget. 25 to 50 quid bottles are usually what I can afford. Any suggestions for decent whiskey in those price ranges? Yeah, it's, there's a few. If you can, the, the 50 quid's probably where you're heading. Glendronach 12 is great. You get that for under 50. Uh, you get the Deanston 12 for under 50. Um, just try to think. Maybe you might just sneak a Klein Leash 14 as well, under 50. So there's, there is some decent whiskies out there under 50. 
Um, whiskey Scout, what are we doing here? What's this? Bouncing around live streams like you do. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for popping in, Robert. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, ah, what? Well, Ardbeg 10, I think. Uh, Neil Bluer's popping one in there. And Ardbeg, if you're a kind of PT lover, you'd certainly pick up an Ardbeg 10. Um, try to think. Old Pulteney 12 for me is just fantastic value. That's that's always, I've always got that on hand. I've always got a few bottles around. Lee J. Brown's popped in. How you doing, Lee J? Nice to see you got your coin, mate. Nice one. Um, let me just see any more. Anybody else think anything under 50? There's lots under 50. Uh, I think it tends to be when you start to hit the kind of I think your 12 year olds tend to be around about that 50 quid mark. Springbank 10 is another one. You've got a Springbank 10. You could pick up a Springbank 12 cash strength. Get one of these for about 50 quid if you're quick. But again, that's one of these. It's It tends to go very, very fast. So you need to be in the right place at the right time. Uh, my, what's Eric saying, man? I like seeing what Eric's saying. What's Eric got on now, man? My only must buy category or anything from Ardbeg. I've joined the cult. Okie dokie. Ardbeg. Yeah. See, it's like this one here. Talking about Ardbeg. This is one of the ones really I bought. I didn't really have an intention of trying. I bought this in my collecting days, which is the Ardbeg 21. Again, I think I paid I think I paid about £180 for that at auction. I got a bargain on it. But that seems to have stood steady now. It doesn't really be going. It's not going crazy. I thought that might have jumped up, but it's round about the 300 quid mark and it's been round that for a while now. So I think I'd beg sometimes they're a wee bit of hit and miss on the auctions. Uh, I'm not sure how the new 19s go and that must be hitting auction a bit now as well. Just a few new guys popped in. I've got Erwin Lim. Nice to see you, Erwin. Where are you from? Who'd get a uh, Isla Bali, Port Charlotte? Yeah, 40 to 50, 45 to 50. No can do, 49. Yeah, so there's there's lots of whiskies under that 50. Um, so your 50 quid seems to be a decent decent guide price. But I think as your journey, pro this is the point I'm trying to make, I think as your journey progresses, then the, the 50 quid gets difficult. Um and I think it's then it's a case I would then do a try before I buy once I go over that 50 quid budget. Uh, and that's why all, this, all the samples are kind of hanging around. Uh, Gabriel's fancy now. We are in 10 for that kind of money, which is great. Uh, FD pricing in the bottlers four years ago. About 26, you'll be on from 70. Yeah, no, it's there's, the independent bottlers are some good bargains out there. Picking them up. I think I've, done, I've got a few here. Picked a lot of these up. Uh, auction 50 60 pounds you know i've got a kind of 20 year old glenn keith there i think i got that for about 60 quid uh so there is the auction the auctions is a good place again if you're looking to pick up something a wee bit older and then taking a punt because it could be a punt it, it, you could get stung you could get caught up in the emotion as long as when you go to auction you stick that budget around as well i buy to drink all right oh yeah eric let's have a look see what eric's doing whiskey i buy to drink or i may buy an extra bottle to trade but i'm not a flipper yeah no I, I i must admit eric i'm not a flipper either i think i think i did i sent one lot to auction and that that was pretty much it so i think i've done all right for buying whiskey for 10 years and i think i've sent one set to auction so i've bought a lot at auction i must admit i've bought lots of them there okay brendan's in nice to see you brendan Kieran Sauterley, nice to see you as well, mate. Kill Kieran, eight-year-old cast strength. Yeah, I think that's that's your £50 budget, but again, you need to be on the ball to get a hold of that one. Uh, Deanston 12, yeah, I think I mentioned the Deanston 12. Yeah, so again, there is decent whiskies there to drink, but what happens once you go past those kind of 12-year-old age statements, you start hitting 15s and 18s and... 20s because then I think your budget then might need to jump to the next level and become a hundred quid budget. Um, but again, if you're going to jump to that 150 quid, that sorry, that hundred that 50 quid, 100 quid budget, then I would probably look to, to get a sample from somewhere, um, whether it's through Master of Mall or whether it's through 
friends or through things like this, swapping samples, that tends to be where it is. And that's the great thing of the power of YouTube now is everybody's communicating now. And I think there must be lots of, every day there must be lots of whiskey getting all shipped around from one whiskey friend to another whiskey friend. Oh, Jason, whiskey-wise, how are you doing, mate? Not seeing you for a while. How's the new job going? Well, it can't be a new job now because you've been away for a while. But it's nice to see you, Jason. Let's see what Jason's got to say. My whiskey budget depends on what I'm looking for, but only on special bottles that go above 100. So what makes it a special bottle, Jason? Is that age? Is it the distillery? Is it the brand? What, what, what takes you to that 200 quid limit? New long road. Yeah, see, there's another one. That's I seen that came out yesterday. I think I got the time I picked the email up and I looked to have a look at getting one. They'd all gone. Uh, okay, got a few new guys in. The Oak and Smoke Reviews. How you doing, Brent? Nice to see you, buddy. Um, oh, <laughs> there's Eric as well. How you doing? Uh, the new, you've got a new uh, malt muser whiskey reviews. Listen, guys, this is... You probably know, but if you don't know, this is Eric um, Rabbit and Red Reviews. He's had a new um, channel name change. So I think if you've not popped over to the Malt Muser, guys, pop over and give him a little sub. Doing a great job over there. I think he's over in Philadelphia. Uh, thanks for popping in there, Eric. Uh, closed distilleries. Oh, yeah, that's where we are. And you're going to pay more than 200 for them, Jason. Golden vintage of that distillery. Yeah, no, you're, you're into the big money there, mate. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, see what else we're missing here. Uh, see what some of you guys are popping in with. Okay, that's uh, Tony Evans. He's saying hello to Jason. No, it's nice to see you, Jason. Need to pop in more often, my friend. Um, oh, Kean O'Hara's popped in. How are you doing, Kean? £100 for a bottle these days. I used to be in the... Oh, let me just find that again. These are gone that quick. Let's uh, let's find where Kean's gone. Wow. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, here we go. And I used to be in the 100, 100 to 200 range, but that was a good few years ago when you could pick up some serious good whiskey. Now prices are a joke. Okay. Nice. Nice. We all have our opinions, Kian. You're right, there may be some shit whiskey out there, but I think there is still some decent stuff. Um, okay. I'll raise my glass to you, Eric. Thanks for that, mate. Oh, yeah. Glad you got them, mate. Just while we're on the subject, guys, I've still got a few coins left. I've not got many, but anybody who wants one, just drop me an email. Um, Alan Wilson, 15 at sky.com. Got a couple left. Um, but yeah, no, thanks for that, Eric. Cheers, mate. Wow. I think I've hit a record. I think I've hit 60 in the chat, man. That's wow. Wonderful. Really chuff, guys. Um, Gerhard, very molasses. Let's see what molasses he's got to say. Uh, okay. I'll come back to you, molasses. I've got Bushmill Boozer. I brought the Jameson Stout Edition for £20. I'm new, but love it. No, that's that's where it's going to start, mate. But you're going to... Um, as it's going, you're going to spend more money, man. Well, she's got a wee point here as well. The Core Spring Range hasn't changed price for some years. Fantastic. I don't know how they do it, Welsh. Uh, the money's phenomenal. I'm pretty sure they can easily put those prices up and they would get them no problem. I'm very, very glad that they haven't. Uh, and I think it's just it's just testament testament to that distillery that they're doing everything the right way. It's all presented well and they're not ripping anybody off money wise. I think once you get into the the older spring banks and you go through auctions, I think then you're really going into unknown territory. But I think you're on with that. Uh what is Rob saying? Nice to see you, Rob. How's, how's the weather in Canada these days? Is it still cold and snowy? 250 Canadian these days. So what is that working out? About £130, £140, something like that. It's a decent budget, Rob. Is that per bottle? Is that per week, per month? 
let's have a look. He's all seem to be getting on very, very well in the chat, guys. They're all talking about Japanese whiskey now. I think that's where it's going crazy is the Japanese. Uh, what is that? What's the whiskey friend saying now? What are we doing, Jason? What's a special bottle which you would want to try now recently? Uh, a good question, man. See, there's, there's difference for me at the minute, Jason, is that my collecting days seem to be over, so now it's I'm in that kind of bracket where I'm drinking it now. So, so when I was collecting, I, I, I could go crazy and spend 500 quid on a bottle. Um, I could spend two, three, and not worry about it. I could get six or seven bottles delivered at a time from an auction. But now that I'm drinking it, it's, yeah, I think they can, uh, I would probably set myself the limit, maybe that kind of 150 for something. I have spent a couple, I've spent a wee bit more than that on the Glen Goyne 25. I bought a couple of bottles of the Glen Goyne 25 because I just love that whiskey and I just love sharing that whiskey. And I think it's time for me actually to buy a new one. So that that's probably where I'd be going at the minute is the Glen Goyne 25. And I know that's one that I've I've had a couple of times before, so so I know I'm not um, I'm not wasting my money on that one. I think that's if you compare that Glen Goyne twenty five to its peers, you know, like Bowmore twenty fives and McAllen twenty fives, then it's it's a no brainer price, even at the three three fifty three sixty. I think it is now. So um, so it's big money. But yeah, no, I think if I was going to spend some money out now on a special bottle, I think I would go back to the, the Glen Goyne 25. Um, where are we now? Um, let's catch up. I think I've got a little bit behind. Sharing is caring. Oh, that's a nice new, uh, nice new motto there, DJ. You might want to get that trademarked. Sharing is caring. Yeah. I still think the share the, the pleasure is in the sharing. That's where we are for me. Best sub sixty pound bottles. Hard to beat the Springbank fifteen, Glendronach fifteen, Long Row Red. Wow. Okay. No, I think everybody's raving about this Long Row Red in a minute. Is anybody in the chat opened it? Uh how's it going down? Is it is is it worth chasing? I think it's pretty much sold out everywhere now, so I might have to kind of go abroad and head over to places like Holland and all that. Too. That's where I ended up getting the Kilkerrany. It was Belgium and Holland and all those places. So I don't know whether it's kind of landed over there yet. Edra, do a car is showing you the shelf. No, that's a good one. Yeah. I hope you all watched the review that came out tonight. If you haven't, you know where to go after this. Edredor Caledonia, fantastic. Look at that. I've only had that a couple of weeks, man, and I've kind of smashed into that one. But yeah, that's that's another one that comes in a great presentation as well. Couple of glasses, nice box. I, th I thought I was going to pay more for it than I did, but it wasn't. Chase me down a bottle of Kilcarran 8, thanks to your review. How much did you pay for it, Brendan? Did you get a deal on it? Oh, I've got Chris Wren. How you doing, Chris? That looks like a new name, that. Forgive me if you're not, Chris, but don't quite remember that. I'm trying to get all the longer reds for a completely tasting of them. Okay, nice. How are you getting on with that? How far have you got most of them? Uh, let's have a look. There's Jason again, aren't we? Okay, David's got one. What did David get? What did David get? Let's have a look. Uh, David. Wow. Need to get used to this chat, man. Oh, Keith Daniel. How you doing, Keith? Nice to see you. Caledonia's on the shelf. Okay, Keith, look. <laughs> Ready to go out the post tomorrow, Keith. Yeah, some coins. And maybe a few. There's a couple of little samples in there as well, Keith. Your special request is in there, my friend. Thanks for your... Beautiful donation to the channel, mate. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, I'm glad to see those two guys are in today. So I've got their parcels all ready to go tomorrow. That's the other one for us, guys. I know the, the YouTubers, I think it's it's great. But 
if we could send stuff around for free, it'd be even better. Um, postage is just crazy at the minute. There's that much going out. It's mad. Um, and the, the not the bad side, but the downside is it's gone all over the world. So it's not as if I'm just sending it down the road. Stuff's tend to go to... I've sent stuff to China recently. I've sent stuff to Japan recently. Uh, America, Canada, Belgium, France. Stuff going all over, which is fantastic. Uh, oh, that's going to go up. I have to put that up there, uh, Keith. Some man. Perfect. Uh, I did not had that compass box, so... Right, okay. So anybody that knows where I can get a hold of a long row red, let me know. Um, fantastic stuff. Yeah, I tell you, I'm going to put a wee break in this at the minute, guys, because I did, I did a little uh, competition on my last live stream. Uh, live stream, live stream. I think, I think only one of them's in at the minute. So I had, I had four super chats last time. So I'm going to, I think the. the Offer that I had was anybody that super chatted went into the draw to to win this little prize. I think if I remember the prize was a coin. I think uh, I'm sure Justin will remind me a coin, five whiskies of your choice that I have open, and a nice wee yard big Fizio t-shirt. So that's where we are with that. So let me. I've got four names in this, and I know a couple of them are over. I got Jason. I've got Jason and the Martian Drum. I've got the Scotch for Dummies. I think that was Drew. Uh, I've got Malt Monk, which was um, Justin and Guinea Pig. Um, so they are the four. So I've got four names. So I'm going to ask my trusty assistant to pick me a number. Pick me a number between one and four. Wow. One. Okay. Let's number one. Number one is Guinea Pig. So hopefully Guinea Pig's not in, but I'll, I'll catch up with them on. Uh, I'll drop them a little note uh, and get that off to them. Um, fantastic. Well done. So that's. Sorry, Justin. Better luck next time, buddy. And. Uh, let's have a look. Anyway, yeah, back to the back to the topic. So where were we left off? So yeah, yeah, budgets. So it looks here, looking at the some of the comments, there's the can all sorts of money is getting spent. Most just missing the latest or oh, the latest one. Yeah, okay. Uh, ninety nine Canadian. That seems okay for a kill carry eight, Brendan. Where did you get that? Did you get that in Canada? I think that's probably about. What we would pay for it here at retail, that would be a normal retail price, that. Um, let's have a look. Chris Wren. Okay, here we go. Chris Wren, I'm kind of new, thanks. I pulled the trigger on a compass box, Great King Street. Yeah, Marion Cask. So uh, as you as a newbie, Chris, what would um, what would your kind of budget be then? What, what are you thinking of spending on whiskey and how do you go around um, deciding what you buy? What, what made you... Go for that compass box. Um, great King Street. It's a great bottle. So, yeah. Um, some of the guys. Kieran Slatterly. Kieran paid a good deal as well. 55. Yeah, so you're there. So, some of these are, it's, it's, that's all right money-wise. But I've seen, I've seen through the, probably a couple of months ago, people were paying £100, £120 to get a hold of that bottle which probably is just too much for it. I know, I know it's great whiskey, but once you hit that sort of price, it's, it's, there has to be... And that's what I'm saying. Some people will, how badly they want to get it, will push that boat out to, to get that money uh, and pay that money to get that bottle. And that's sometimes what it is. Sometimes you're paying maybe just as much in shipping to, to get it sent to you. Um, so, yeah, no, it's... But that is a great bottle. I'm sure I've got it here somewhere, but I'm just... Let's have a look. In fact, I might just... If I can find it, I might just have one. Got bottles everywhere at the minute. Kill Karen. Where have I put that? Kill Karen. Wow. Um, 
I feel like Quig in a minute, I'm just doing a disappearing act here to find the bottle, but I know I've definitely got it here. I don't go too far without that bottle, but anyway, let's come back to that. Uh, doo -doo -doo, yeah, 55, uh, a few of you guys are really getting on now. Um, what are we in now? We're in 40 minutes in, that's going well. Uh, let's see if I can catch up here. Chris Renz just answered me there. I usually spend not much though than $60, $70. I gave myself a limit of $100 with taxes included. I guess limits are meant to be broken. No, I think the point I'm making, guys, is I think at some point they will be broken. Um, because as, as your journey progresses, then you decide that you want to have better bottles. You need to get a hold of better bottles. Um, and I think um uh, something's coming tomorrow what's coming tomorrow uh, jason whiskey wise coming tomorrow i will open on friday okay nice which one is that antonio i think i missed that um so see as i see my, my personal budget as well it's changed for me now um it's because i'm drinking more and i'm opening more let's have a little sip of water here um, yeah, I've kind of have that kind of 150 max. And that would probably be some sort of age. That may be a 18-year-old, 21-year-old, maybe even a, a 25. So that's that's where you, once you start to get into the, the older whiskies, then I think to get a hold of them and to buy bottles, I think your budget has to increase. I don't think you can get away with 100 quid now. There's not many now for 18-year-olds and 21-year-olds that you can... There's a few, but there's there's probably more on the, the higher end of the 100 quid mark to get them. It's like the, the Allardyce now. This one's bordering around 100 pounds at the minute. Um, and I think that will that will continue to rise as, as it starts to disappear. Uh, I've heard it's gone away for a little while. But again, another great whiskey. Again, I was buying that bottle for about seventy pounds eighteen months ago, um, and that's now jumped up to run about that hundred pound mark. It's still pretty much readily available. Um, but yeah, let's have a look. Kevin O'Connell, how are you doing, Kevin? Uh, what are we looking at now? What's Kevin saying? Can the kill care and eight cassis? For uh, here in Verma, okay, wow. <laughs> is is that the is that the bourbon one, Kevin, or is that the sherry one? There, there is two of them. I think that one here, that's the sherry one. Kill Karen, eight. Uh, that's that, that's the bourbon one. Sorry, uh, I'm puzzled as to where I've put that Kill Karen, guys. Maybe I've took it back indoors and drunk it somewhere, but let's have a look. Uh, I've actually got a wee thirst, wee thirst now for that kill, Karen, so I could actually do that. Let me have a wee look and see if I can find it, guys. I'm sure you're all getting on well amongst yourselves anyway. Wow. Okay. One of them, it's probably right under my nose. Can anybody see it on the wall? Is it on the wall behind me somewhere? I don't think so. No. Okay, doesn't look like I'm having any kill Karen 8 tonight. I'll just stick with this Glendronach. Yeah, that'll be this one. Still nice, mate. Super stuff. Quite a few very fine 18 rows below. Yeah. What would be your pick, Welsh? What would you recommend? If you had one 18 year old to pick under 100, what would it be? Recently tried Lot Loman 12, one of the best value drams right here. Yeah, great money. 
just to give you an idea with that one, um, Lewis, I've managed to pick up a case of that. It was on offer. Be this one you're talking about. I picked up a case of this about a year ago. The whiskey exchange had it on offer for £28 for that. And that's one of those that it just could not resist. Um, snap it up, and I've been drinking it ever since. But yeah, no, super choice there, buddy. And that, again, it's it's one of those. It's great for beginners. It's great for newbies. It's a, a great one to start with. Uh, yeah, Glenn Dronach, 18, Mark Slinger's on. How you doing, Mark? How's that Glenn Dronach still doing up there in Speyside? Is it changing this year? Next year, when's it changing? Uh, oh, he's a man after my heart. I'm a Glenn Dronach man myself. 18 for 100 quid. Yeah, but it just shows you, you could have bought that 18 months ago for about 70 quid. Um, but that's the power of, of whiskey, and I think the more, the more there's a hype about something... Um, Chris, buy yourself a bottle of that Loch Lomond 12. You won't be disappointed, mate. Uh, yeah. Okay, well, she's got a list to you guys. Get your pens out. Glenn Cadam, 18. Talisker, 18. Glenn Levitt, 18. Glenn Goyne, 18. I love Glenn Cadam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like Glenn Cadam myself. I did do a little run of Glenn Cadam probably this time last year. You can catch all of them. I think I don't know if I did the 18. I think I did everything but the 18, I think. Uh, I can't remember offhand. Uh, let's go on here. I would experience the spring bank and this year, but my knees are very badly these days. Okay. Um, wasn't drinking whiskey 18. Oh, man. Yeah. I can't even believe that, man. I don't know if anybody knows Mark, but Mark lives in right in the heart of Speyside, right in whiskey world, man. And he wasn't drinking whiskey. How long you lived there, Mark? Is it 20 odd years? He's lived up there for 20 years. We are in all them distilleries all around him and never drunk any whiskey. I thought my story was sad, but hopefully you're making up for it now, my friend. Um let's have a look. Royal Salute for 68 euros. Okie dokie. Nice one. Um, okay, guys, just got another quick question. I'm not, I'm not going to try and stay on to I'm going to try and do about an hour, guys. But just to end this little discussion, little debate, where would you draw the line? What, what would stop you? Buying that, where, how, what would make you just overstretch your budget, and then what would be the the, the cutting point where you would say, no, nah, that's too much? Uh, how how would you discuss that? How would you decide that? How would you find that out? Don't know if that's too complicated a question, but yeah, that's too. Yeah, your budget's a hundred. Somebody's been raving about a bottle that's maybe let's say a hundred and fifty. How would you decide? whether you would pull the trigger on it. Would you believe them? Would you take the word for it? Would you just pull the trigger anyway? Would you <laughs> Gerhard's wife to tell him where he's, he's to stop? Good, that would be a great one, Gerhard. Uh, you have Glenn Dronach single cask. Uh, I've got the... I've got one up here. I've got the range of these. It's the... Glenn Dronach cast strength. This is the batch one. See, this is another typical bottle. This was a fifty-pound bottle of whiskey. But I think if you were the only way you would maybe get a hold of this now would be at an auction site, and I think you'd be pushed to get it anywhere less than a hundred and fifty to two hundred quid. And I think that's just purely because it's it's batch one for a start. Um, Mark Slinger's just putting in here. My whiskey, my limit was always a hundred pounds, but I recently went to hundred and fourteen or twenty-four. Yeah, so that was purely on recommendation. So, have you opened it? Um, 
Great buy. Oh well, yeah, well she's well she's helping you out there. He's on your side. Um, what have we got here? I've got some. Nobody's telling any truth. I feel guilty saying this, but I know if I'm getting a deal, then I am more likely to break the budget. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. well, I think everybody. I think that's. They don't need to feel guilty about that, Chris. I think everybody would do the same. Value. Here's one for Robert. What's Robert saying? Price versus quality. Unfortunately, you never know if you spent too much until you try it. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah, let's do a different question then. Have you overspent and you've opened it and been disappointed? How's that? Is that a better question? 150, here we go. It's 150 bottle for me to strive to buy right now is an old Pulteney 17. Mark down from 214 to 150. <laughs> Yeah, I'd say that's 150 is probably it's on the high end. Certainly the 214 is way on the the high end of it. That that's too high. Uh, I think you're probably looking uh I think you would probably pick up maybe uh even that's high for the old Pulteney 21. The 21 you'd probably get in the States for less than that. I think when I spoke to Phil at Captain 3D, he says that he could get the Old Pulteney 21 for about $180. And I think the Old Pulteney 17 was about $120. I think that was in California. So I'm not too sure where you are, Chris, but I think it is available in California. Um, I've got a friend, Jerry, who's picked one up and or he's looking to pick one. He can pick me one up in, in Las Vegas. So there, there is a few around that you can pick, but I think that 150 is probably on the high end. Uh, Merlin Turin for a Glendron hand fell at the distillery. Well worth it. Yeah, no, that's Eric. That's great if it's if it's the values there and you're and you're getting that enjoyment and you've. Um, I think a couple of times I've been disappointed. Um, I've maybe believed the hype. I think everyone was probably. I think I've seen some of the guys that have reviewed the Kill Karen Eight. I think it was hyped that much that sometimes when you when you kind of come to drink it you come to open it it's been hyped that much that you maybe feel a wee bit a wee bit underwhelmed and maybe a wee bit disappointed and I think I'd probably leave that bottle if that's the case I'd probably leave that bottle for a few months and then come back to it once all the hype's died down it's like watching a movie I think everybody's hyping up a movie you have to go to this sitting you have to get the early sitting you have to go after midnight to get in and sit and watch this it's going to be a spectacular movie and you go that, and it's you kind of come out, and it's not done it for you. Um, but then a couple of years later, I've watched it again on TV, and it's just blown me away. It's so sometimes I think the hype can come in and cloud your judgment a little bit. Um, and I think that's where I think where a lot of blind tasting comes in great because it puts the whiskey in its in its own merit. Um, so you're actually tasting the whiskey without knowing what it is. I think that's a great way of going out and maybe doing whiskey tastings, joining whiskey clubs and going to private events that do tasting events. And I think then you may come across some nice whiskey just purely on how it tastes. Then you've got a decision if you like it, are you willing to pay the money for it? But I think it helps really that you've, if you like that bottle or you like that whiskey or you've, you've liked that dram that you've tasted. Um, so, yeah, no, I think it's a really, really interesting topic, guys, particularly – as you go through those stages, as you go through the the beginner stage, and I think it's the twenty five to thirty to thirty five, maybe to forty, push it to forty pounders, if depending on your what you can spend on whiskey. And then I think as your journey progresses, you come through into that. See, I tend to think the kind of ten year olds, twelve year olds, are kind of your entry levels where where your journey begins. And then as that's progressing, you start to hit the maybe 15, 14, 15, 16 year olds. And then again, as it's getting, and, and you'll probably find that your budget goes with it. You might not be buying as many bottles as you were buying. The great thing is, if you like those entry levels, those 10 year olds, those 12 year olds, then you can keep getting those for birthdays and Christmases and Father's Days and all that kind of stuff. So you just put the word out, get me a bottle of whiskey. So, that may free up some cash 
for you to spend on some of the older stuff. So maybe the the Klein Lease fourteens and the RN fourteens. You know the kind of once you get into those better levels, those Springbank fifteens, um, those better bottles that are kind of hovering around that kind of fifty to seventy pound market. Um, one of the other great ones that I got this year was the Lafroy 10 cast strength. I see I picked that up for great money. I think that was about £70, I think. Phenomenal whiskey. Uh, so there is great whiskey out there. So it's not a quick journey. It could be a, as Mark said, Mark's now been hanging around up there for 20 years and now he's kind of, he's diving into the deep end. Let me see what I missed here. Um, was blending a 1980s teacher's island cream. Still drink it today. Wow, wee man. Where do, where do you get a hold of that, David? Have you got a few cases of that put away? Wow. Super. Uh, it's the video. Oh, yeah, there's one. It's the video. Videos like that. This makes me spend more money on whiskey and Ralphie. Well, no, hopefully, we're here to try and. If I wouldn't really. If, if I've enjoyed it, I enjoy it. I'd, I'd hope to think that I've pushed somebody in a direction and it hasn't really worked out for them. But touch wood, so far, I've seen you've done okay so far. Um, Lee J, let's have a look. Lee J's got the thumbs up for that. Nice to see you. I think you're pretty much, if I'm not mistaken, Lee J, I think you're new to whiskey as well, aren't you? Um, when I'm saying new, I'm not too sure how new. A lot of thumbs up going on here at a minute. I don't know if I've missed something. Uh, or Wells, I think we heard Wells saying he's a whiskey geek, which I probably think is probably true. Uh, let's have a look. Here we go. This is where I'm getting to, Wells. I think you've nailed it on the head, mate. It's just whiskey at the end of the day. We are geeks chasing the dream. Yeah, and I think it's like any hobby. If you're into cars, then you dream of a maybe a Ferrari one day or you dream of a Bentley one day. It's one of those. I think in, we're in your whiskey. It's just deciding what whiskey these days would be your your dream whiskey. Whether it be a, is it a Springbank 30? Is it a Glen Goyne 30? Where, where's the kind of holy grail of whiskey at the minute? Where would you guys, I think all you guys are all at different levels of your journey. Uh, at a minute. So what would be I think Jason asked me this earlier, what would be your your bottle that you would maybe push the bank? Is there any bottles that you would think of pushing the bank out for? Uh, I think I've got a wee bit behind again. Yeah, Eric's back on. Most of my budget is actually spent on whiskey travel. Yeah, no, that's that's another thing, Eric. Um that's probably something that's going to come my way later on this year because I think I'm looking to head over to Texas and Kentucky later on in the year. So I'm saving up at a minute. So I've actually kind of curbed my spending a little bit at the moment uh, trying to save up because I think when I'm there, possibly I'm going to be spending some money on some whiskey over there. So I did watch um, Captain Three Days visit to Scotland and then he's traveling back with four cases of whiskey i don't think i'm going to be quite that into it but hopefully i'm going to bring a few bottles back yeah i think wow there's one there guys eh that's a dream in it mccallan 50 wow what do you think you're going to pay for that saint magdalene 1979 wow eh? okay that's another one of those closed distilleries, I think. So that that's going to cost you some money. That one, I take it, that might be a. Is that a birth year there, Daniel? Don't know if that's a birth year, is it? Sometimes when I see those, a lot of old blends get left behind. Yeah, wow, we. I can't see I'm a blend guy. I don't think I've done much. Funny enough, some I think I've got a friend on Facebook he calls me a milk snob I think because I'm, I can attend to kind of stay away for the the blended whiskies at the minute so I've never really got into the blended whiskies um, I think the closest I got I think was the Johnny Walker Black I think that's or the Johnny Walker Greens that's the kind of the extent of my knowledge I have got a few samples sent to me that are 
that are blends. Um, okay, David Evans has got a Glenn Farkless. That that to be fair, David, I don't think that's going to. It's not mind blowing that money. I think you could pick one of them up. I think the Glenn Farkless forty is reasonable. Um, I can't really think off the top of my hand, the top of my head. Well, there you go. You finally made it. Mr. Jerry Kelsey's in. How you doing, Jerry? Oh, well, we'll be getting a few cases for sure. <laughs> yeah, no, Jerry's Jerry's the one that I'm planning to meet up with in the States. Um, I'm sure everybody knows how Jerry is. Jerry's featured in many of my videos. He's a very, very generous man. He sends me lots of bourbons and lots of Americans. I still can't kind of get you guys to watch these bourbon reviews. Um, but I'm going to persevere with them because I'm enjoying the bourbon, really. And again, it's it's that. It's the bourbon whiskies. Um, but nice see you pop in, Jerry. Glad you made it. I've, I've been trying to hang on for you, mate. I've scheduled it a wee bit later than normal just to kind of help you out. So I'm glad you made it this time. Um, yeah, no, Jerry sent me lots and lots of stuff. I don't think you can see Jerry's stuff behind you here, but he's, he sent me a lot of whiskey. Um... I think I've got a wee parcel ready to get set up for you, Jerry. So just give me a shout when you're back home again and I'll uh, I'll get something off to you, mate. Um, what we got here? Uh, Jerry's in, yeah. Um, my collection is now eight bottles, soon to be five due to my dram tastings with son-in-law. <laughs> okay. Okay, so you've got a wee while to go there, Lee J. You've got lots of Lots of bottles to catch up on. Um, glad you're still with me, Emily. Um, and Brent's still there. Well done, Brent. Thanks for hanging in there, buddy. What What is it over in the States, Brent? Now, what would you... How, how's the journey? I know I'm talking about single malts here, but there's no reason I can't even say the same thing with bourbons. What's, I know bourbons a wee bit... I think the money over there is a wee bit greater, but is, does there come a point with bourbons where it kind of maxes out? Um... I think the difference here, we're um we can get access to some bourbons, but I think we pay a wee bit more over here than you guys do over there. Um I think Jerry sent me some bot some Jack Daniels that are like sixty dollars, sixty-five dollars a bottle, but then they become hard to get by, just a little bit like Springbank. So so how's it work over in the States there, Brent? What's what's the kind of How's your budgets work over there? Is it a kind of twenty dollars, twenty five dollars, thirty dollars, fifty dollars? Uh, Jerry needs to be my mate too. Jerry, I think you're going to pick up some friends here, mate. Uh, I've been telling everybody all about you, mate. So, so I'm sure you'll catch up with everyone. Um, just remember where you're sending the whiskey, Jerry. Don't let them try and talk you into sending them any whiskey, mate. Just thinking, you know, think of all that postage and all that, mate. Just just keep sending it here. Um, yeah, I've tried the Jack Daniels Heritage Barrel yet. Uh, are you asking me that? Um, where are we? Keith. Uh, Keith, if you go back, I think it's two videos, I think. I did the two Heritage Barrels and the single barrel barrel proof at Jack Daniels. I've reviewed all of them together. Um so if you have a wee lick through, like flick through, I think it was Whiskey Review 108, maybe 9, something like that. Uh, you can check it out. Fuck me. Well, oh, there we go. What you got there, Welsh? Wow. Bourbon at 100 plus is a complete no-no. <laughs> yeah. So what, what kind of bourbons would be $100 plus? Is that £100 plus? What would, what would they be? Jerry might be able to help us out with them. Jerry, what kind of bourbons are we looking at? A hundred pounds plus. Are they worth buying? Uh, whiskey friend, low. Yours is the only address I have in the UK. <laughs> nice one, Jerry. Love that, mate. Let me just pop you up here. Let's have a look. Uh, got to start driving. Yeah, no, thanks for popping in, Ben. I know you've been in a while now, buddy. Um, there you go. Jerry's got the only address in the UK, Jerry. Just make sure it stays that way. Um, fantastic. 
Um, so yeah, no, the, the whole thing it's not it's a global thing. We could look at Belgium and you know Belgian whiskies and Swedish whiskies and I know the Japanese are a wee bit outrageous price wise at the minute, but I think at some point once people start stop buying it, it'll pop back down again. Not waste your money on Papi Van Winkle overrated. Yeah, I've watched a few videos in the past where they're comparing Van Winkles. Um, I'm not sure if it's Weller that they, they compare it to. But they think, the, the, is it the Weller that it's the poor man's Papi? I may be mistaken with that, but off the top of my head, I'm kind of on the spot at a minute. Well, for £120, you can get a 200 um heritage barrel okay uh yes jerry if that was if that was the money here i would pay that for it i think that's one that would probably stretch the boat out uh, i know you've sent me some really really nice bourbons but it's whether i would stretch to that it's in that same boat for me is once i go past the kind of 100 pound limit here it needs to be something spectacular the problem I've got now is that I'm sharing a lot. So when I was buying those hundred pound bottles, um, I was taking my time going through them. But now when I, I could spend, the reason why I've went through a couple of bottles of Glen Goyne 25 is because I've shared a lot of it. So it's a lot of expense to, it's a lot of money to share out now. So I, I think that's probably my predicament at the minute is that, Gary, send it my address. Alan shares it. He doesn't even try it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me just delete that one. Let me delete that post. Um, but it's, there's D itself. How you doing, buddy? Uh, the whiskey friend just bought my new most expensive bottle ever, Springbank 25. Time to taste. Okay. How much did you pay for that, Dustin? And then if you once you taste it, just let me know if you feel it's worth the money. I don't know if you want to share how much you paid for it. Um, but the current Japanese whiskey market is terrible, absolute terrible. Japanese whiskey is busted out. Yeah, no, I think people have got wise to it. I think it's it's one of those. It just got that just stretched everybody's budget. Nobody could go anywhere near that. And I don't think the money. Well, I think once they did, they did. Oh, there's that sharing is caring again. Yeah, no, I know. That's my problem though. If, if I'm spending three hundred and fifty pounds on a bottle of whiskey. I'd like to sit down and savour that and enjoy it and take my time with it. But because my motto is the pleasure is the sharing, I tend to share a lot of it. So it doesn't last that long. But it's, it's a tough, I'm in a tough spot at the minute. Um, and this is what YouTube's done to me at the minute, is it's it's put me in a tough predicament. I've probably opened more bottles than I've opened for a long, long time. I've got bottles everywhere, guys. Everywhere you look, I don't know if you can see any of that around, but it's everywhere. I've got open bottles all over the place. In fact, let me just pour another whiskey while I'm here. Gonna have a wee bit of Ben Nevis uh Ralphie bottle. Getting a wee bit thirsty. Okay. What's everyone drinking, guys? Why don't you all go and get your most expensive whiskey that you've bought and share them all with us? Tell us how you're enjoying them. Uh, oh, yeah, Eric's introducing himself to Jerry. Jerry, don't be sending that Eric weight any whiskey, man. You probably have to do that, Eric, even if you have to be careful. You missed a little bit there. Yeah, see that typical example? I think DJ's popped one up here. Uh, lucky to get the Nika whiskey from the barrel, seven fifty for under sixty dollars. See, I think that's where they've got clever again. You've got a seven fifty bottle there, but I think we've got we've got the five hundred CL bottle, the five hundred bottles rather than the the normal seven. We get normally seven hundred here. I think in the states they get seven fifty, but ours is uh no, he has tons. But mighty go out and see. Oh yeah, no, no, that's yeah. He's he's near you, I think. Well, I'm saying he's near you, he could be a million miles away. But I know he's in the same continent. <laughs> it just gets better, man. See, as this Ben Nevis has got further down the bottle, 
as you can see, I've done a bit of it. I've shared a bit of it. Um, but initially, when I when I first opened this one, it was very meaty and it was very damp, very dry and very dirty and real, real thick and what I would class as one of those moody malts. But just pouring this one now, been sitting, I've not tried it now for two or three weeks, but it's become much, much more perfumed. Oh, how you doing, Swami? Nice for you to pop in. I think I've just seen a little super chat there from Swami. How you doing, buddy? I'll just have a wee drink of this Ben Nevis, four-year-old, to your good health, my friend, and thanks for your super chat, Swami. Much appreciated, mate. But this one now, it's still intense. It's still powerful. It's still dirty, but it's it's become a little bit more floral. It's beautifully opened up in the bottle now. It's really approachable now. It's not as moody as it used to be. And I'm really, really enjoying this. Um, let's have a look now. See if anybody's opened up any bottles, man. Let's have a look. I uh, would prefer Whistle Pig to the 12 year old. Okay. Missed a wee bit of comment there. I have got a bottle of Whistle Pig um, DJ. I've got a Whistle Pig 10 year old. I think it's a store pick here in the UK. I think it was one of them. It's a high proof. It was about 100 and 130 odd proof. It's a real, real high one. Wonderful stuff. It's up there, I think, with the. Um, Elijah Craig barrel proof that kind of power and that kind of strength. Uh, see, I shared quite a bit of that as well. I don't think I've got it out here with me, but yeah, no, I've got a really nice whistle pig. Yeah, how you doing, Swami? Are you, what time are you going? I don't know if you've been on or you're going on or what time are you going on later. Uh, I don't know if you've done it. It looks like you might have done it. I think. Um, I think Jerry and Eric Way are setting up a date. I think they're getting set up here. Um, ah, it's okay. I'll catch it later on, mate, when I come off. Sorry about that, buddy. I see. I was just saying this Sunday night's becoming a busy night now. Um, when I started doing it, I think there was nothing, not much going on. That's why I kind of picked on the Sunday, but seems to be a wee few bits and bobs popping up tonight. Um, yeah, so I don't see anybody's opened up those special bottles yet, guys. Who, who's drinking something special? That Who's drinking something that they've spent more than they wanted to spend on it? That'd be a good question. Um, yeah, I probably thought I paid more. I paid about 60, 60 pounds, I think, for this. So as a four year old, I think that's a lot of money. But I'm enjoying it now. And the thing I think that some of the some of the younger stuff that's coming out now, some of the eight year olds, nine year old statements, they're coming out with super stuff. Just walked in the door with Springbank twenty eight hundred and twenty five dollars, man. So there's there's a man who's and it's open. Wow. Wow, wee man, that's 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 a lot of money, man. That was at about six hundred pounds here, maybe some of that. That is awesome, man. You need to let me know how it tastes. Is it is it worth the eight twenty five? There's a question. So that's a lot of money, guys, for a twenty five year old. That's wow, eight hundred and twenty five dollars. Let's toast to that. That's awesome, Dustin. Just some bare face, seven-year-old. Uh, okay, here's Gabriel's gone. Okay, Gabriel, let's see what you've got. I should go and get out my £150 twine Klein Lease 23. Okay. Yep, 150 quid. That's a lot of money, man. Um, I'm now drinking Glenn Farkless 1996. Wow, this chat started moving again, man. I just missed that there. Here we go. David, David Owen, I think, is it, David? Got it for 70 euros. Wow. 
1996, the Susan Glenn Farkless. And how's that? That nice and sherry then, David? I've had a lot of the Glenn Farklesses are quite hot. I always find a lot of them a wee bit hotter. Even the 40 proof ones, 40% and 43s are, are hot. But this is still, this is meaty and beefy and but it's just got that little bit more floral now. So it's got really nice. The nose has got a little bit better. The taste is still the same. It's still the same on the palate. But it's a wee bit more friendlier now. Um, drinking a Dewar's Blend double 21 year old. Not overly expensive. 50 for a 375. Enjoy the heck out of it. That, that's what it's all about, guys. It's all about enjoying the whiskey. Enjoying everything. Um, sometimes you can get too carried away. Purely with, with auctions. It's finding your... Obviously, finding your niche, are you liking the sherry whiskies? Are you liking the bourbon whiskies? Are you liking the peated whiskies? Where where does it, how does that journey take its course for you? Uh, does budget have anything to do with that? I think sometimes people think peated ones should probably cost a little bit more. But I think the great news for Isla is some of the, the younger distilleries have come along, like Kilhoman, are really, really easy to get hold of. Great money. Um, and that that's fantastic. Oh, Swami's on the green label. Yeah, I like the green label, Swami. I always thought that was the best Johnny Walker that they had, and they stopped it here for a bit, but I'm glad to see that it's back again. Um, but yeah, no, I think that's pretty much me, guys. I've had, I've had a really, really interesting chat tonight. I've enjoyed it. Hopefully I've spent that hour and what are we looking at? It's coming up for about an hour and 20 minutes. Hopefully that's enough for you guys. I'm got obviously there's a few bits and bobs to catch up. The whiskey friend Sherry with Sherry me with love. <laughs> I've just missed a you've just missed a Sherry one, um, Jerry. Let me open up another one just for Jerry. I've I can't even refuse this man because he's he looks after me big time. I'm gonna pour one. I had one of these earlier, Jerry. So I'm gonna just pour the rest of it. This is Sherry, mate. Colour, oh, you can see the colour of that. That is my Glendronach 18. Oh well, let's go for it. Let's the hell of it. Yeah, listen, guys. If anybody, and I know I'm, I was going to end that there, I know I've done this before, but I've got a day off tomorrow. So if anybody feels that they want to come on and join, then I'm open to having a dram with somebody and having a chat. I know I made the mistake last time I done it and I stayed on for four hours. But I'm gonna I'm gonna pop a link up here. Um I think let's see if I can do that right. Um and pop it on. Um, and if anybody fancies it. Then, then come on, I'll have a drink with you. I think Swami looks like he's up for it. Oh my God, likes like sit up. Yeah, no, this is this is the baby. This one, Jerry. This is a belter. Yeah, no, I know. Well, the last one went for four hours, mate. I'm no gonna do four hours this time. Um. But. Wow. I don't know if I missed that there. I don't know if that link came up there. Did that link come up? Yeah. So the link's up there. Anybody fancies it? Fancies a wee chat? Fancies a dram? Ain't gone four hours though. Never enough, lol. My biggest spend so far was Deanston Port Finish, just over a hundred adventure in Yeah. Wow. There's another one. Wow, I've got a few coming in, man. Let's have a look. Let's see who we've got these. Let's see these ugly mushies here, man. Let's have a look. Now, let me uh, mute this. Oh, wow, look at that, man. 
Yeah. So I'm on there. That's what I was talking about. That Doers 21. Wow. It's a double double. I really like it. It's, wow. it's good. And Green Label's excellent too, Swami. I'm with you. I like that one as well. And I got this. Oh. Oh, Guinness. Guinness. No, no, Guinness. No. Oh wow! Okay. Better cover up the labeling on my glass here. So <laughs> <laughs> you do, lad, you okay? Mm -hmm. I just did a stream with uh, Josh Peters from the Whiskey Jug. Uh, he's yeah, no, no, it's so much going on tonight, man. Uh, uh, I, it's, I decided to do Sunday night as a regular slot, man. I thought it was a quiet. Nobody was. But certainly you guys over in the other side of the pond, I think it was probably too early for you guys, but... I just, all... I just did it because it was the only day I had to do it. Uh, me and I yeah. have been uh, chatting back and forth for over a year about doing a show together, but we both work really crazy schedules. Wow. He works for BuzzFeed, and uh, I work working beers into a glass, so it's like, you know... <laughs> <laughs> we had to figure yeah. out a time that worked, and uh, it worked out, so he was great. It was awesome. Really good show. I'm really happy with it. I enjoyed it. It was yeah. it was for me. I watched the I think I came in about a third of the way through, but I like reading a lot of what he writes, Dan. I get a lot of information from him and he's, he's gonna be writing an article about me. Yep. Wow. Wow, is that is that X rated? <laughs> yeah. Uh, is that X rated? I don't know. Hopefully complimentary. Yeah. <laughs> is it is he caught you with your pants down and all that? Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> oh, he's a wonderful guy, man. Uh, I got to know him. He really knows his shit. He's going to be start. Um, him and a board are going to be starting their own certification course for uh, whiskeys. It's not going to be. It's going to be an actual real certification course, and it's not going to be uh, an insane amount of money. But it's going to be something along the lines of what they do in Scotland. So for uh, brand ambassadors and things like that, it's going to be happening. Wow. So. That would be interesting. Yeah. So what's your take on budgets, guys? And how do, how do you decide how much you spend, man? Uh, Has that changed lot. over the years, mommy? I, to me, usually whiskey yearly, I don't spend as much as like uh, some of the other guys in the group, and it's nothing against them. They can do it. I just don't have that kind of income. I, I'm, I'm in the bracket of, you know, between fifty to $6,000 a year, so I got to keep my budget, you know, normal. So yeah. um, I usually spend maybe around – close to four thousand a year i'd say on whiskey not uh not much more than that i'm not doing yeah. you know i'm doing enough to to keep bringing product for the channel and yeah. all honesty it's too much for me to drink so i just end up having like 95 percent open bottles in my bar so yeah that, that's the problem i have here because once i start opening all day i'm finding now that when i was drinking on my own I'm going through it nicely, a little, little bottle here and a little bottle there. But when you start doing the channel and try to do two reviews a week, then it's it's a lot of bottles that get open. So that's why I'm thankful to guys like Jerry Kersey and all them who send me lots of samples to try. And, and, it, and it really, really helps um, because the whole place would just be open bottles of whiskey. And it's, I don't know if they just share it everywhere. And I'm doing that anyway, but <laughs> I'm finding it's the only way I can get through them quicker. Um, yeah. I'm out. It's hard to agree with you. You end up with so many half open bottles, and, and you know, we were talking about McAllen Sherry Cask earlier at 12, and yeah. I love the stuff personally. This is my third or fourth bottle of it, but it'll take me a long time. I mean, this yeah. is up probably six, eight months ago, and that's all that's gone. But when you have one person and so much to drink, it's yeah, that's tough. Yeah. Yeah, I always uh, I always let people know like uh, that watch me. It takes me usually close to eight nine months to finish a bottle of whiskey. It's not something that uh, I finish within a month. I don't. I, I'm 41. I don't drink like I used to in my 20s and 30s. You know, so it's yeah. No, I don't. I don't find that I'm I'm drinking lots of it. I'm find I'm sharing lots of it. That's yeah. that's yes. Yeah. Kind of heading out for me. I'm sending parcels out two, three, four a week, uh, all over the place. And just that people just stuff that some people kind of get a hold of. And we have got access to here. I send quite a bit to the States because they don't seem to have maybe as much access to a lot of They have way more access than you do. Don't listen to them. They have. Uh, they're not. 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 They're
they're not, they're not telling me they're in certain states and they can't get a hold of this and they can't yeah. get a hold of that. Right. So, yeah, are, they, are they pulling my trousers down? Yeah. yeah that's no. a yeah no i I, uh uh, to to dustin saying that's true i drink more beer than i drink whiskey i'm honest about that i I prefer i love my whiskey but i prefer beer Uh, i'm very straightforward about that it's more along the lines that i can drink three or four beers not get drunk and you know not feel like shit the next day if i have like six or seven ounces of whiskey though i'm fucked for like three days yeah I drink, I, I drink beer too, not probably. I do a thing on every Sunday. It's called Stout Sunday with uh, John O'Neill, and, and he runs it every Sunday morning. And I, we just always review a stout, and I like stout beers. And I've done it about a year now. And I, I do enjoy that. But as far as drinking sessionable beers, maybe once a month, maybe buy a six pack of something like Coors. No, I'm purely stout. I'm 100% stout guy, so I don't. Yeah, care. Uh, me for the majority, it's the dark beers. I prefer dark beers. I don't. It's not always got to be a stout. And like that uh, founders and Frangelic Mountain Brown. I enjoy that. Uh, things along those nature lines, I like. Hey Ben, how are you doing? Find that now when you go to the supermarkets now. Those the, this craft beer now seems to be a. All the rage now. There's that many different beers all popping up. Left, well, right, and left. craft beer that I'm drinking. Yeah, all sorts, man. It's uh, this is a uh, craft stout. It's called uh, I'm wrong in English. It would be Black Row. Black Row were like the priests when uh, they came in oh. uh, Quebec. Uh, the priests from France to, to indoctrinate the uh, native population. In wow. Christianity, and uh, it's a delicious. It's not expensive. This is a uh, close to a uh, 750 cell bottle. Yeah, 750 milliliter. I get it for like four dollars. It's a chocolate stout that's got uh, chocolate, uh, dark chocolate nibs when they brew it. It's delicious. Sounds good. Eight percent ABV. Beautiful stuff. It sounds really good. This guy's done. Beautiful man. What's your budget, Alan? Or you've had enough? Yeah, my, bu- my budget's changed, man. I think when I was when I was collecting. <laughs> I would spend stupid money, man, um, because I was collecting oh, it. Yeah. But now that I'm drinking it and and sharing it, it's I've kind of set myself a limit now. I'm buying bottles that I think are probably current. I probably wouldn't have bought before, so I'm buying them really more for the channel. So I, I'll buy those anything that, that the Kill Karen Eights come out, or if that, that long row Reddit's came out today, I've, yesterday. I've tried to get a hold of that, and it's gone already. Um, so that kind of 60, 70, 80 pounds maybe for the channel and oh. if, if it's Springbank or something then I'll, I'll dive all over that I, I, uh, try to, I try to stay away from the fads, that saves me money I, I don't really care about having the newest fad bottle yeah. review. I, I review what I want people don't want to watch it, I don't give a fuck so. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I just tend to find there's 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 some nice stuff coming out. That's and it's and try to keep the I try to keep the channel current, but you may be right, it may be just review what I want. That's what I'm doing with the bourbons really. I've been doing I've been doing a lot of bourbon reviews and I've done a couple of little stints on bourbon. The first one didn't go too well. Nobody seems to watch it, but I was enjoying the bourbon, so I just carried on with it. Uh, I think it's your accent. People will watch, like uh, when you're Scotch, people love watching Scotch. People do Scotch. And people want to watch American guys with like a Texas or a Kentucky or a Southern accent. You think I should put an American accent on? Like when Scout will do, like let's say if Scout does a bourbon, more people will watch Scout do a bourbon than a Scottish or a British guy do a bourbon. Where like (laughs) for us, like I guess in Canada, rye, people want to watch us do lot 40s and. Canadian club and shut the fuck up when it comes to the rest of the stuff. And uh, so <laughs> trying to go read. Yeah, I've just, I've just done the lot forties. I had all, I had three lot forties to do, so I, I did all that. Went all right that one. Yeah. Well, lot yeah. forties wonderful. Eleven year old, twelve year old, and I think I did the, the standard lot forty. I did head to head. I got a little bit left of my eleven year old. That's still in the bar. I got this though from Scotland. Uh, Whiskey, uh, whiskey for all sense to me. It's the bee's knees from the SMWS single cask for okay. uh, 42.24 right next to me. That I might take a sip of. Yeah, your man Quig sent me quite a bit. 
<laughs> Quick sent me some nice stuff, man. He does. He's I, I exchanged with Quig quite a bit. He sent me a uh, Kofi grain uh, bottle like about a month and a half ago. Okay. okay. Just looking here, he sent me the got a couple of Y JP Wisers. 35 year old and a 19 year old JP Wisers. Uh, what's the last thing he sent me? It was a Canadian club. That Canadian club one as well. He's got a crazy, a crazy Canadian club one, I think. Yeah, Canadian Club 40 at 45 percent. That's probably what he might have sent you too. It's I haven't opened this one yet. This one of the few I haven't actually. Well, he also sent me this, and that was weird. I only took a little bit of a sip off of it. Central City Distilling Lowen McKinnon Chocolate Malt Aged in Sauternes Barrel Single Malt Whiskey, wow. 43% ABV. And I don't know anything about it, but I had just, it was filled up to here, and I just had just a little bit just to see what it was like. And it was different. It's not bad. It's just yeah. strange. It tastes chocolatey. Mm, it's been a while since I tasted it. I'd have to remember, but I don't remember thinking it did. Yeah. Hell, now I want to try it. <laughs> we'll reacquaint ourselves. How about that? But. How's the weather over there now, Swami? I think the last time it's Daniel on his head, it was like minus 40 or something. It's gotten actually a little warmer. Um, springtime's coming. Uh, motorcycle season's gonna be happening soon. I can't fucking wait. Uh, yeah. uh, dying. Uh, it's been, it's been uh, close. To, I just bought my new bike last year in May, so I got to ride it for like five months, and then winter came, and I was really pissed. And I can't wait to get it back out again. So, just dying for uh, March fifteenth is the date legally I can get back on the road. So. But you have legal dates to get yeah winter tire season. You can't you can't ride a vehicle without winter tires during um, from uh, December fifteenth till March fifteenth. You can ride a motorcycle if you can get winter tires for it. So it's pretty much dirt bikes and um, ATVs and stuff like that that can ride during those months. But if you don't, they don't they don't they do make winter tires for motorcycles, but they cost like you know more than a car. So I would never purchase them. Yeah, uh, well, that Suzuki I bought, I've been, it's a V Strom. It's kind of on off road. It's got uh, Nobbies. 50 tires on it. So I think they'd be classified as winter tires. Yeah. Nobbies are classified winter tires. So if you have Nobbies, you can do it. But uh, yeah, that's uh, my Kawasaki. You can't get Nobbies for it, I don't think. No, I'm a Harley either. <laughs> if I could, I wouldn't do it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> It, dude, they cost like six hundred dollars for one tire. So like, it's like twelve hundred for, for a pair. I'm like, no, no. Yeah, yeah. There is a bit of a chocolate note in the nose on this. That's for sure. So how's that whiskey, Alan? Oh, good. Man, I'm just trying to catch up with some of the comments next year. But yeah, no, the. Whiskey, that's the Glendronach 18, mate. It's awesome. I've, I'm tied between both at the minute. I've opened up the the Ben Nevis 4 as well, but that's a bit... This is a real meaty, dirty... I, I love Ben Nevis. This is meaty and dirty and dense and thick. And, but then I'm back to my old my old favourite at Glendronach 18, but they, could, they couldn't be any more different, these two. Ben Nevis does, does uh, Sherry really well. Well, they really do a good job. Yeah. I've, I've yeah, but it's got, this real, it's got this real, real nice meaty note. It's real, real meaty. And as I say, I've just opened up the first time in a couple of, it's been three or four weeks, but it's become much more floral now. But as before, it was a wee bit uptight when I, when I first opened it, but it's really opened up nice. As the bottle's gone down, it's the nose has improved much. The palate's pretty much the same. It's tastes the same, but... That's a great guy. Right. Okay, David, thanks for popping in, buddy. Nice to see you. Getting late now yep. here in Germany. I think you're about an hour ahead, aren't you? So, but yeah. Listen, guys, if you've not subscribed to Swami, then you know where he is. Montreal, 
get in there and get them subscribed to. And obviously, you've got um, Robert there at the Whiskey Scout as well, mate. So both great channels, man. So very vanilla. Wow, lots of vanillas in that. Chocolate, vanilla, a little bit of wood, sweet, maybe more like a marshmallow sweetness. What I had recently that I got a lot of marshmallow that you're talking about was uh, just the Woodford Reserve regular. I, I, I like retried it a couple of weeks ago. I was at a bar they didn't really have it. They had a Woodford Reserve, so I grabbed that and I, I was like, "Yeah, there's a lot of marshmallow to this." Yeah. To me, it's a toasted marshmallow. I bet on oh, that Woodford Reserve, but I get a lot of that charcoal. They got a Woodford Reserve double double. I've been wanting to try that, or double cast, or something double oaked. I'd like to try that, but I have X amount of money to spend and Y amount of. Your budget won't allow you. Yeah. Your wife won't allow you. <laughs> well, I walk in there and I look at that and I think I get that, and then I see that, and I go, "Well, yeah. I think maybe I rather have that than that." Yeah. Decision. Did kids I get both? Yeah. No, <laughs> I'd be in the poorhouse and my wife would beat me with a baseball bat. <laughs> it's, uh, I've been sipping on this green label for about two and a half hours. It's so slow. I'm drinking my whiskey today. And yeah. I'm getting so much floral now coming through. Like this incredible amount of like flowery notes of like violets. It's like the only way I can describe it. Like a potpourri ish nose. Yeah, no, I love that. Lavender. That was really the only blended one that I, that I kind of went to regularly. Was the green lip? They, they took it off here for about three or four years. Yeah, this, for three or four years, and then it it's just recently come back. Uh, well, I don't know. It was it was off for about three four years, but it came back. I think it was like two thousand sixteen, two thousand yeah, something like that. But it didn't keep a beat just as good as the old one. You, you don't think it's as good? Do you think it's as good? I think it is as good. As good, yeah. A little less smoky compared to the old one. The old one had a little more peat punch to it. This one has a little more, I would have to say, fruitiness coming off of it. A lot more um, of the uh, sweeter notes, but not sweet on the palate. It's not a sugary dram, but it's got like sweeter notes on the nose. Yeah. So what you got coming up in the channel, Swami? got coming up, mate? Uh, I've got two reviews that will be coming out. Well, one this week and one next week. They were pre-filmed one uh, about a week ago. So I've got a Glenlivet Code that's going to be coming out. And then i got a Gordon McPhail independent bottle of a Cleel Isla 13-year-old cast strength fully for and cherry oak wow. barrels. So that will be coming out. And the next uh, – this Tuesday will be the Glenlivet Code review. I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you. You're going to watch the review. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Robert? What plans you got? This is the next one. It's I edited it all last night. I'll probably release it tomorrow. Okay. I did one. I just done uh, Rock Town Bourbon. I released that yesterday, and this will be my next release. So, and I I really like it. We'll leave it at that, and you guys can watch it. But that's to me. This is probably one of, if not the best blend I've had in them ever. I really enjoy this stuff. I mean, wow. You know, does, does teachers have a um, a higher age blend, like a 21 year old or something like that from teachers? Because like, I, I tried it. I'm aware of it. Recently, I was at my friend's house in a bottle, just like the basic teachers, and I was like, it's not made too bad. I was like, it would be cool to see it at a a higher age music. right no basic teachers is for the price range and what it competes with at that price range it is probably one of the best ones you can get you know to me personally in that price range i like teachers it's really i can get it usually between 15 and 20 dollars around here and i, I really, really fell back in love with grant's family reserve it, it beats that. My um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't hate it. I drank it a couple of weeks ago. I bought a bottle of it like in December, just in a pinch for like a party. And then I had like half a bottle left and I was like, well, I'll have some tonight. And I was like, it's, it's not bad. That's rough. That's rough stuff. That's why I don't mind it. I wonder what a bottle from about 1983 would taste like. Yeah. Yeah. This is old. It's still got the 
Kansas tax stamp, and we yeah. quit using those in 86. This predates um, that a little bit. I bought it at a – I haven't opened it. That's just natural loss. I bought it at a little store in west southwest Kansas. I can't bring myself to open it. It's <laughs> – it's just it's not <laughs> worth value wise that much. I mean, that's a mental. It's just something you're not going to find again. <laughs> why, why wouldn't you open that robot? Uh, because I can buy the bottle. It's going to evaporate away. Bucks, and if I wanted to do it, I'd just or, I'd buy another bottle of the newer stuff. I mean, it's just, it's been in the bottle this long. I feel guilty for. Did they think you were a hoarder? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I just, you know, like I said, value-wise, it's probably has very little value. It's more, just more of an interesting talking point than anything. I think. Yeah. Like an old bottle of Johnny Red. You just keep it because it's sentimental. Yeah, it's just interesting. That's. I got yeah, you, get, you get lots of those coming up at auction here. You get loads of loads of those old old bottles, old old Johnny Red ones in the eighties and all that. You pick them up for about twenty quid, thirty at auction. If that if that's your thing, you know what I mean? It's that's that's like this one. It comes out of the nineties. Uh, Bowmore more seventeen and more seventeen. Date, I think ninety four and ninety five is where it dates to. Again, I, natural loss on the thing, but. I paid fifty dollars off the shelf for this in a little liquor store out in the middle of nowhere. I gotta say, I got more respect for the collector that's collecting yeah. fundamental values and the collector that's collecting for monetary reasons. So I kind of like it. Yeah. Oh, I could tell Robert looked as if he was in love with that bottle there, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> he looked as if he was going to give it a wee cuddle. <laughs> this one I opened, no problem. This <laughs> came out early two thousands. I mean. Yeah. The first one that they did. I, the Isla? Which one is that one? A Peak Project. I've had two of them. This is my yeah. second one. If you have, if you have a PC five, I'm going to kill you. No, I haven't seen that one. I, if I did, I'd buy it. <laughs> yeah. Now this is still good. It's just I, it doesn't have. I don't know. It just. I, this is my second bottle, so you know I, that one I have no problem opening. I, I found I found one online about like. Four or five months back, and the guy wanted five hundred bucks for the PC five, and I like I was like no, but like I would I really kind of wanted it, but I like stopped myself. I was like when I was buying it was like a sixty dollar bottle. I was like what the hell? Yeah, but that's exactly what I was trying to get across tonight, Swami. It's that, but if you want that bottle bad enough, would would you pull the trigger on it eventually, or would you? Are no, you just I, would, I wouldn't go over. Like I, I've got still a still hanging in. My budget, my budget depends. Like I, I have done three hundred plus on bottles, but it's so far few between when I do that. It's like once every like two years I'll splurge on like a three hundred dollar plus bottle. My 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 baseline is between one fifty to two hundred is what I normally will spend on a bottle. I, I'm not going to go over that. I like occasionally I treat myself. I get something over the three hundred dollar mark, but it's it's not it's not enough for me to say that I would normally spend three hundred on a bottle or plus. Yeah. So. I just I think when you get to that stage, sometimes you can be really, really disappointed. It's like those. It's not the point. Where it's like it's never, old I've, old never, I've never had a whiskey that I've drank where I've said, "Wow, that is five hundred dollars in my mouth." No, I've never, yeah. never happened. I, I agree with you. And I've drank yeah. some really expensive fucking whiskeys. I've drank whiskeys that are like over the five thousand dollar mark, and I drink them and I'd be like, "Meh," like I was like, "Yeah." I, it's good, but I've tasted stuff like, you know, and I'm not saying cheap stuff, but stuff like the 200, the 250 mark that tasted just as good. And I'm like, uh, no. Yeah, I agree with you on that. Yeah. That's why I don't I don't understand the Pappy Van Winkles and, and the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection, all that stuff. Bourbon. Well, that's that's bourbon the collector bourbon. market that's driving them. Yeah, I know. And it just doesn't, it's just the value is, for me, Personally, the value is not there. It's just mm -hmm. not. But I come to it from a drinker standpoint. A lot of people buying that stuff are just putting it in a cabinet. Yeah. Everybody that walks in, look what I've got. You know, that's fine. Yeah, look, look what I've got. Yeah. <laughs> it's like this one. It's like that one, right? But again, at the same time, I'm not judging anyone that does it. They can do no, it. No, no, no. Yeah, but you see, I'll tell you the reason why I've not opened this one, right? 
This is a £79 bottle of whiskey. Edition number one? Edition yeah. one, yeah. £79 I paid for that. Mm. But if I sell it at auction now, it's 1500 quid. Oh, There's yeah. no way, even, even if I wanted to open it, I'd, if I, it it's just it's mad to open it. Yeah, it's... I, if I, if, I don't know. If I'm you, though, in the next three, four years, what you want to sell, sell, because I think the, the crowd's going to break the camera's back uh, within the next three, four years. I think the next one's the last one. So that'd be the full set of them. So. That's kind of like what you're talking about. This is a nice yeah. nine McAllen 18. Yeah. So these 89... What was the last year they did the 18s that they quit putting the date? Was it 97? 97 or 98 is when they put quit putting the the uh, vintage vintage date on it. And I only gave $150 for that. Yeah, but that'll be silly money now. Yeah, it's I've been watching yeah. the auctions about once a year and it's about it's over five hundred now, maybe six now. I haven't checked in a while. And I can't bring my. I'm going to open it, but I'm going to wait till either my daughter or my son gets married, and this mm. is going to be what we're going to open when they get married. That's, nice. that's what that's for. I recently purchased a bottle of cognac. It's a 50 year old bottle that I'm not opening till I hit 50, so I wait until nine. A lot of my bottles have, even though I don't open them, some of them. They have reasons I would open just like that one. That's I've already even pointed it to the kids. I said we're going to open this. And this is what we're going to enjoy. Yeah. Uh, when my daughter graduated from high school. I bought a uh, oh, uh, I really like it. I got to think about it now. <laughs> it's uh, I can't think of. It. We drank the whole bottle. Uh, <laughs> it's a bourbon. It's uh, Joseph Magnus cigar blend. I bought a Joseph Magnus cigar blend and I drank just a little bit off of it, took it over to Barton Scott's and then I corked it and because I gave it to, I gave uh, my son a little try. I said, well, let's we'll say this. Sarah's going to graduate here in about six, eight months. Let's save it until she graduates and let's just drink it. He said, all right, put the cork in it and we'll keep it because it's really good stuff. It was wonderful. Yeah, I was, so you find a sentimental attachment to your bottles then, Robert? Yeah. I do. I <laughs> <laughs> All right, I love you both a lot, but I've been online since uh, three o'clock this afternoon, Eastern Standard Time, and I want to go. Yeah, pleasure, Tommy. I don't think I'm going to be far behind you anyway, yeah. mate. So I'm thanks for so coming in, buddy. You know, uh, I just, you know, you can't drink anymore when I've literally been drinking the same dram for two and a half hours. I just, I'm wow, <laughs> I think you sound as if you're going off whiskey, man. Well, you going off? I'm never going off whiskey. I just don't drink like a uh, madman. Man. I, yeah. I have my ounce, uh, one ounce. You're getting uh, old. Days. Yeah, I'm old. Getting old. That's, yeah, it's relaxing. Anyways, love oh. all you. I'm going to take off. I'm going to go eat. Some no worries, buddy. It's been a pleasure, mate. Thanks for popping in. I appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. Have a good night, Alan. Yeah, Bye. Buddy. Love you. See, See you later. Cheers. Later, all, right. all you people in the chat. Yeah. You, Robert, where in, where in the States are you? I'm actually in Kansas. I actually don't live very far from Barton Scott. Uh, All right. I, my wife's, we move about every few years due to her job. So I did live in north central Kansas. Now I'm in south central Kansas, closer to them. But, uh, Is that where Dorothy's from? Huh? Is that where Dorothy's from? Dorothy, <laughs> I don't know. Where. <laughs> He's from Hollywood. <laughs> Hollywood, they caused called Kansas. <laughs> Kansas, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we do have a. Oh, where's it at? There's a town in Kansas that they actually did make a little yellow brick road. Yeah, yellow brick road. Yeah, they, were, <laughs> they capitalized on the uh, theme there. <laughs> I can't remember. It's where it's. Uh, at. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed, Robert, but D.H. Silva is saying that that McAllen that you've got has gone for 1500 at the auction at the minute. Wow. Uh, I haven't checked in about a year, but I think it was last year I looked at it. and I thought, well, I could throw up my whole baggage, take it over there, and and it'd pay for my trip to and from Scotland, <laughs> flight-wise. Wow. 
<laughs> and I'm not going to do that. I, I I like to drink my whiskeys. It, yeah. it, it may take a while to get to them, but yeah, I do like to drink them. Talking <laughs> about Scott and Bart, did you watch his Aquaviti Blind Challenge? No, I haven't seen that yet. It's come oh, up. Oh, I haven't. Wow. Ever I, watch it? I will. I'll get around to it probably this evening sometime. So yeah. Oh, yeah. but yeah. If you ever, I don't know if you guys get that over there or not, but I would for three seventy five. Yeah. For forty nine ninety nine, I think you would be surprised how good a blend can be. Is that a Duo twenty one? Yeah, it's a Duo's twenty one. It's called Double Double. Oh. Comes in a oh. fancy white box with the pressed in. Yeah, I mean, really. It caught me by surprise. I was a little underwhelmed when wow. I bought it because I'd seen some other people's reviews, and it came in and Whiskey Advocate put it in their top five. I can't remember the exact position. And I seen it at the liquor store, and I thought, well, I'll give it a try for 50 bucks. And, yeah, and, it was uh, in your budget. Hmm? Was it within budget? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was well within yeah. budget. I, if they had two, I'd go back and buy the other one right now, to tell you the truth. But uh, there's another liquor store that's got one, but I got to drive about an hour to get there. So, But uh, if I get back over there and they still got it, I'll purchase that one because that one's going to be gone before. That's probably got maybe a day and a half, two days left. <laughs> how how do these how does your blends go in America? Are people on track with what blends are and like say that kind of duos? But that'd be a wee bit obscure there, would it not? This one? Yeah. This, no. It's kind of like I said, it made it in Whiskey Advocates a magazine. And I think they got a twenty seven and a thirty two year old. I've not oh. seen any of those. This is the only one I've seen, so if those ever show up, I will definitely buy those as well just to try. Because, uh, I mean, I, I've been I, – I really I, – I like it. Man, I don't care if it's a blend or not. I really I really enjoy that. I, you'll see you – know, I'll put out – probably tomorrow I'll put out that video. and Yeah. You all can watch me wax poetically about it. Nick <laughs> <laughs> Sylvie's saying, I thought when I bought it, it was a full bottle, but it was a bit disappointed. Is that the McAllen 18 he's talking about? I don't know. Somebody else he's saying here. I see a bottle of McAllen 1989 Mac sale right now, just under 2000 Oh, wow. Wow. So hmm. that sentimental value might change a wee bit, Robert. Yeah. <laughs> $150 initial investment was... That might be for the wedding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's still... Yeah, that will be for the wedding. Yeah, no, it's going to be drank at the wedding. <laughs> yeah. If you don't drink it, how will you, you... You know, you were telling... You were asking me why I don't open that other bottle. There's not much value to open in that bottle. There's more value, yes, to open in that Mac 18 when I eventually do. Yeah. But, oh, but if you don't open that... Um, that other blended the, the grants one you had, it'll just evaporate. Right. Well, and it has, it, but it has no. There's no intrinsic value. It's only going to be a twenty dollar bottle, whether it. Oh no, he's talking about the the, the Jules twenty one. It was he was a wee bit disappointed with the Jules twenty one. Oh, well, I'm sorry to hear that because I really. Yeah, so. Some people, I, I watched videos prior to it and. I went into it with a little bit of a, eh, it's going to be all right kind of attitude. And I mean, everybody's palate's different, and this one really yeah. talked to mine. It really appealed to me. And that, that's the beauty of whiskey is some of us will love it and some of us won't. It's just, that's just yeah. how we are. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. it's definitely. I think DHL says he's just opened an 825-pound bottle of Springbank. How's that gone? I'm sure it was Dustin that says he opened that. I'm not sure if I missed if he said whether he enjoyed it or not. Mm. But he's on a £125 bottle of Springbank 25 today. Oh, well, I've never even seen one. Only the, I think the oldest Springbanks we got here is I've seen the 18 and they want almost two, they want $200 for a bottle of the 18. Last time yeah. I that's a bit expensive, I think, for what I'm getting. I went on thinking I was getting a full bottle and I wasn't. Yeah, he was expecting a 750 or 375. 
<laughs> yeah. But... Dustin is, oh, I think Phil's popped in from the Whiskey Mystery. Nice to see you, Phil. Loving the new logo and the new name change. Yeah. I think he says he's going to drop the Captain 3D soon as well, so. Hmm. Thanks for popping in. I'm not going to ask you what your budget is, man. Who, man? I'm not going to, going to ask Phil what his budget is. Oh. He goes and buys 80 bottles of whiskey in one go. Yeah. No. <laughs> How I, I would be sleeping in the shed. <laughs> I wouldn't even be allowed in the house. <laughs> uh, yeah. It better be keeping me warm when I lay underneath it. In the How shed. you doing, Phil? <laughs> yeah. No, he's just he's just a serial spender, I think, man. Yeah, I say that, and you look at all the bottles behind me, but that's over a long period of time. That's just all that yeah. stuff wasn't bought. I think Phil's he's been about eighteen months. I think. Yeah, this no, is four or five dramatic. years. Easy. <laughs> so. what is he unlimited. He's got an unlimited budget. <laughs> I need to visit. We're in uh, I'm sure he's pulling my leg here. I can see we drink about $50 a week. Yeah, but I bet you spend $50 a week, man. <laughs> Oh, let's see what any of these are saying. But yeah, no, I think I'm going to wrap this up shortly, Robert. I appreciate you coming in, mate. I'm going to look forward to seeing your uh, your video tomorrow. Well, thanks for having me. I enjoy it. Oh, nice. What's the plans? What you got planned coming up? You got who? Me? Yeah. Just do, the do you get a, do you go and do tools and all that? Are you are you close to distilleries and all that kind of stuff? And you're naked woods? Not here in Kansas, no. Oh, no, no. We got one distillery in Wichita. Uh, everything else would be a drive. There's uh, that was not very. I've had a bottle of the whiskey. I didn't even do a review. I didn't care for it that much. And I just, it's not worth. Oh, doing. good. Mm -mm. Not to my palate. <clears throat> there are whiskeys that I drink that I do not review because <clears throat> they're just not. <coughs> They're just not too good, and they're just a small distillery. I mean, I don't mind doing a review on a whiskey that's a bad whiskey, like well, yeah. I think a bad whiskey like Mellow Corn. Everybody likes that stuff, but I have drank I just tried some of that recently. To be fair, <laughs> I, is, it, is, it, is it heaven hell in it? That. Yeah, but oh. I would rather have moonshine straight off the still. All right, no, <laughs> I went to um. I went to a whiskey event in Manchester a couple of weeks ago and there was a guy there, he had a whiskey shop and he was obviously trying to sell some bottles of whiskey and, and he had a few bottles open for you to try and that mellow corn was there. And uh, to be fair, I think a lot of them liked it. He was he was doing well. I, mean, I suppose he's giving it away for free. They're going to keep drinking it. But yeah, a lot of them seem to think that they liked it. There's a lot of, a lot, Barton a Scott. Sip of it. Yeah, Barton Scott both think for the value and the price. At about nine or ten dollars a bottle here in the states, it's hard to beat. But I just it doesn't. I don't. There's just something there that I do not care for. <laughs> yeah, no, I was just saying a funny one there. Phil's just said that he's unlimited because Deeper always says yes, just buy it. <laughs> You've got a super wife there, Phil. I yep. think everybody else kind of hides their whiskey buying from their wives. I think. I think that's the kind of plan i think is if as long as the wife doesn't know then i think it's okay i think what i used to do was tell her it was 20 pound a bottle and all that kind of stuff oh it's only 20 pounds that uh but that didn't last very long so they start they're no long and wisening up but yeah no they, they spend some money on whiskey then man yeah what cases you brought back from scotland am immediate sherry in the low 100s huh? i don't know I'm going to I here, but that might be a special bottle. It must be a special bottle. Um, no, nothing. Amber, yeah. Okay. Wow. Uh, yes, Deepa is a top pick. Well, no, you've got a cracker there, mate. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, been a pleasure, Robert. Yep. Thank you. Thanks for popping in, mate. And uh, thanks, everybody. That's just coming up for. 
timed that nice now, man. It's just coming up for two hours now, so I think that's that's yep. going to be a result. I think the last one I stayed on for four hours on the last one, so that just talking about all sorts of shit about weather and fires in Australia and snow in Canada and all that shit and everything. Four hours, man. I don't even know what people say. I think I still had about 40 on the end of that one. I couldn't believe they were all still there, but... Oh, well. But yeah. Uh, I'm back. Had to drive to work. You're still on. Yeah, I'm just finishing, Rob. Thanks for popping back, mate. Hope you've had a good day at work. Uh, Rob's in Canada as well, man, so... Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I'd like to thank everybody that popped in tonight. I'd like to thank Swami and Monty in Montreal. So if you multi in Montreal, so and obviously Robert the Whiskey Scout man. Uh, if you've not checked out our channels, guys, just pop over and have a look and hit that subscribe button. Sure, we can all deal with it. Deal with the subscribes. Um, but until next week, guys, I'm probably going to not do one next Sunday, guys. It's probably going to be the week after. We're going to try and do them every other Sunday, but. If I do one next week, I'll, I'll post a, a little note out letting everybody that it's on. But thanks again, everybody. Cheers. Thanks, you Cheers, Robert. Thanks. Bye, guys.